For our final of the DNA processes, children of the flipping classes, we will talk about translation. You will notice I'm wearing the same clothes as previous video, not because I'm dirty and gross and wore the same clothes twice, but because record the same video, same time, and then cut them into little videos. You're welcome. Could have been one big video, now it's not. So translation, this is the process where the uh, ribosome comes in and actually reads the exons, that mature mRNA, and makes delicious chain of amino acids. That chain of amino acids we call a protein. Now this one gets a little meaty, so bear in there children, it's gonna take a little bit longer for me to get all through it. So you have the mRNA, actually it's passed through the ribosome, which is what they're showing right here. You see the mRNA passing through the ribosome. As it passes through the ribosome, the code is read at the A site, right? So it's going through uh, that way. It starts at the A site, gets read right there at the A site. Then the, T, the mRNA codon, which are these segments of three, for example, the mRNA codon AUG, which should look pretty familiar to you at this point gets paired up with the tRNA anti-codon. Codons are sets of three in the mRNA. That's how we look at them because those are important. You'll see why here in just a minute. The anti-codon, like you can see here in the picture, is just the part that pairs up with it really nicely. See, A goes with U, U goes with A, G goes with C, bloop. So you have the anti-codon. Now on the other end of the anti-codon, again connected because of base parents is this amino acid. Here they're showing you the amino acid metionine, which is actually at the beginning of every single protein ever made. The ribosome then takes that off right there, takes that amino acid, separates it from the anticodon, and sticks it to the next amino acid as they keep a coming. It's connecting them with a special type of covalent bond called a peptide bond. And for this reason, we call the chain of amino acids a polypeptide, meaning there's many peptide bonds. So see, the amino acids together, many of them, many much more of amino acids, like thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even more polypeptide. And the idea here is that one gene in your DNA codes for one polypeptide. So let's talk about the code. Remember, the coding side of your DNA gets read down, that one side, that three prime upside. Each DNA triplet codes for an mRNA code on. Just getting some terminology out of your faces here. Each codon on the mRNA matches with an anti-codon on the tRNA, which looks a lot like this. Remember, RNA is single-stranded, so it has this ability to form some of those hydrogen bonds and actually do a little bit of base pairing and matches up sort of like a, a delicious enzyme. So these anti-codons that are being carried by the transfer RNA, that's what the T stands for, by the way, is actually acting sort of like an enzyme. Down here you see the anti-codon, that unit of three that is going to match up with the mRNA codon. And up here at this end where you got that ACC up at the three prime end, that is where we'll actually attach the amino acid. So the transfer RNA, the tRNA, their job is a carry to transfer amino acids to the ribosome. The ribosome will fit it together using those base pairings, it's got some enzyme action in there, using more enzymatic reactions will break off the amino acid and stick some together to make delectable proteins using the peptide bonds, which again is why we call it polypeptide. So here's a picture showing that whole thing happening. You can see over here, we've got our mRNA, three prime to five prime. You've got uh, your transfer RNA here, using the anti-codons, they're going to match up with the appropriate codon, see the C and the G can bond, the A and the U can bond, and the A and the U can bond. And at the other end, they've got this leucine hanging down there. The leucine is one of our 20 amino acids. There's only 20 that we use to make proteins, which is kind of cool that every trait controlled by every protein made up of only 20 amino acids in a 20 letter alphabet. We can't even use 20 letters just for words, so it's kind of cool. And it goes on as sticking them together. You see the next one, next codon in the line is G, 
CG, which will match it with the anticodon CGC, which as we're showing here, is carrying alanine, the amino acid, which will be the next amino acid in our polypeptide chain. Here's a, a little bit more in-depth picture. You can see that you've got the, uh, the peptidal bonding site. That was the middle site. You've got the E site for the exit, the A site where we're red. You can see here's our mRNA down here on the bottom getting all readed. And by readed, I mean red because that's grammatically correct. And up here, the uh, technicolor dream line that is representing our polypeptide chain. Each different colored snoopit represents an amino acid being put together by the ribosome. Here again, in case you know you needed more pictures, is another picture showing all the same thing. Feel free to look at this picture, figure out what's going on. Like you can see here, you got your amino acids being put together in your chain by the ribosome. You'll notice in this picture, though, you have one, two, three ribosomes all up on this mRNA. This is the beauty of the mRNA system. You see, you get the mRNA big old chain, and then you can put a crap ton of ribosomes all over it and mass produce a protein. Each one of these ribosomes is pumping out a polypeptide based on the code in the mRNA. Those polypeptides then can go on and be further modified and turned into the proteins. Here's animation. Shows pretty much that same thing happening. You can see uh, these blue things flying in are your tRNA. And you see up here in this area we're building our protein, our amino acid chain. As right, so you can see here, you see the chain of amino acids, the polypeptide is getting longer. The ribosome is taking those teeny tiny amino acids off of the tRNA and sticking them together, making this chain, forming this chain, and eventually it's going to just spit out the side of the uh, ribosome like a big old globble. Yeah, that looks real good. See them all flying in here. What's really fun is these tRNAs, these are just free floating around in the cytoplasm of your cell. So let's stop this and let's talk about the codon chart. In the link in the description, I have PDF file of this. We're going to practice with these a little bit after you make your very first polypeptide to make sure that we can use this chart really effectively. As you can see here, all the uh, codons, all the different mRNA combinations are laid out here. So you start with the first letter, which would either be a U, a C, an A, or a G, because those are the only options for bases. Then you go up to the top, you find the second letter. So if the first letter is a C, and the second letter is a C, then we know that we are somewhere in proline world. For another example, if your first letter is, let's say, an A, and your second letter is a G, then you know you're somewhere down in here. You could either have serine, or you could have arginine, based on the third letter, which is showing you right over here. So you got your A, comes together with your G. The third letter is a U or a C, you get serine. And if your third letter is an A or a G, you're going to get arginine which you're probably already asking yourself, why does a first letter, second letter, why does a third letter have that flexibility? That's actually due to what we call the wobble. Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. Yeah. Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. Yeah. wobble baby. Third position is called the wobble site. And when that third one is moved into that slot where it's being read, uh, it's kind of sloppy. It doesn't always have to have a good connection. If you get a good connection with the first two, the third one won't really matter that much. So you see here, this one's showing all three lined up. If these two were to bond together really nicely, the third one doesn't necessarily have to base pair properly for the ribosome to be able to plunk off the amino acid and make yourself a protein. Which is the reason why, due to that wobble in the third position on the codon, that you have this really big flexibility. You have more than 20 different combinations, but you only end up with 20 different amino acids. You'll notice in here that we've got AUG is in green for methionine. That's because it's also the start codon. The ribosome will read, speed read, skim through the mRNA until it comes up with AUG. Then it starts plunking amino acids off. Not before. Also, you'll notice you have several different red stop codons. Once it hits a UAA, a UAG, or a UGA, the stop codons, the mRNA uh, was just told the ribosome to stop. 
and stop means stop. So the ribosome actually just breaks apart, releasing the polypeptide into the cytoplasm. Once it hits stop, that's it. It doesn't matter how much it's made, how little it's made, stop means stop. So it stops. Whew, I know that was a lot to chew on, guys. Don't worry, we're going to spend a lot of time working with this in class, the whole DNA uh, transcription, translation, probably one of the toughest concepts so far this year. You guys are doing great. Go ahead and put your questions. Is required this time for this video. Must do the Moodle forum question and answer. So put your questions and or your answers in the Moodle. Goodle, goodle. Thanks for watching.